This is an issue with the electric vehicles that I haven't heard anybody else talk about. I'm not talking about charging infrastructure. Nah, I'm not talking about private infrastructure. How many people can put plugs in your house? Nah, I'm talking about more infrastructure, roads in this case, crash safety stuff with the barriers and concrete, uh, pillars on roads, and also the guardrails. Hey, it's Tim, Pick a Truck Plus, as we talk. I've been a journalist for 14 years covering this stuff. This morning, I about spit out my coffee. My wife showed me this story from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, which I happen to be in Nebraska myself. It's a Midwest roadside safety facility. These people work on guardrails, concrete barriers to have the roads be safe in the case of an accident or a spin out or something going on. That's what you're crashing into. The idea is you survive. They took an electric vehicle. In this case, we're an R1T at 7,000 pounds. And they just kind of, yeah, <laughs> they just kind of plowed through the concrete barriers and the guardrail. I mean, look at that. It moved the concrete barrier. Now, the concrete barrier will be secured uh, in a roadway, but just look at the damage that's going through the electric vehicle going through this. Uh, and it goes up and over. Now, this is at speed. I think it was at 60 miles an hour. And the idea here is say you're hot dog with your friends, whatever, and you spin out of control. You hit black ice, spin out of control. And what does this heavy electric vehicle do in a circumstance like this? This is a slow-mo of the guardrail. Doesn't even phase it. Doesn't even phase it. And it's not, that one's not even a direct blow. It's kind of off to the side. Guardrail does nothing. The electric vehicle goes right through it. And this is not something not unique. I mean, we've seen, you can Google semi-truck crash through highway barrier and you see semi-trucks go through the stuff. But it doesn't typically happen with a lot of passenger vehicles, and especially a lot of heavy or half-ton trucks that weigh about 5,000 pounds. You're looking at something that weighs even more than that. You're talking about something that weighs 7,000 pounds, right? So a very heavy vehicle. You also have the heavy vehicle going through the safety barrier. You're going to have issues with the occupants, issues with um, all the occupants are going to be are surviving this crash. I mean, you may hopefully you don't die. But there's another issue brought up. And I reached out to our friends over at the IIHS.org. And I reached out. I said, hey, have you guys done testing like this? And since... Their testing is a different. They don't do that same kind of testing. The the, um, the Midwest safety people are trying to build new barriers that prevent this kind of stuff. They're putting like radios in the barriers and they're putting signals and things that way electric vehicles can handle things a little differently and vehicles do handle a little differently, make our roads safer. But they pointed out to this article that was written, I'll pull up here on the screen when I get my keyboard to, to work correctly, um, from Raul. And Raul is the... Uh, Vice President of Vehicle Research for the IHS. Now, Royal points out a couple things. First of all, he was firstly concerned about electric vehicles with a fire. And so they have done crash testing. They've invited the fire department in to make sure they're there in case of a fire. Uh, uh, electric vehicle, lithium-ion batteries can ignite, and the fires can be extremely hard to put out. So there's been a lot of news in that. Uh, it seems like firefighters got this now understand a little bit better. We're getting... Some new safety protocols to be a little better with that. But what he was also concerned about was the, the weight. So he had pointed out that with the first EV they tested, it was only 3,300 pounds. That was a 2011 Nissan Leaf. And now you have a 9,500 pound GMC Hummer EV. Imagine 90, that GMC Hummer going through the barriers that the University of Nebraska Lincoln put out, not the 7,000 pound Rivian. So he points out a couple things. So first of all, they had to make some changes to their safety testing to make they'll test these EVs because they are a lot heavier than vehicles they have out there. But I think it's it's interesting. He brings out two things. He goes, first of all, they did a bunch of tests in 2018 and they talked about what happens when big vehicle meets smaller vehicle, right? Mid-size SUV, small car, large car, minivan or mini car, right? And as you'd imagine, it's the bigger car wins. So Rivian versus F-150 Rivian's gonna, um, the occupants be safer inside of Rivian because the heavier car beats the lighter truck, right? So that's how that stuff works. Now, what also is interesting is that they're talking about speed. So there, you have questions about braking performance in EVs, but you also know that these vehicles have no problem accelerating. Today's supersized EVs are a double whammy of weight and horsepower. While there are many heavy vehicles on our roads before EVs, a delivery truck isn't designed to go 0 to 60 in three seconds like the Hummer did, he mentioned above. That's a very interesting point, is that looking at the stuff, it's like, okay, all of a sudden, we're going to go from 0 to 60 in three seconds, and 9,500-pound 
GMC Hummer EV, and we have concrete barriers to stop you from going across traffic or going down a ravine in a guardrail. And those guardrails and those concrete barriers are not designed to handle a that heavy a vehicle going at that quick a speed, right? Semi trucks and things they go over, they gets caught. They have designed for that. The barriers we have today for passenger vehicles are meant to hit or run off or, or kind of they hit and they kind of sideswipe it off or something like that. And so I just imagine a situation like if you're driving through the mountains of Colorado and you fall asleep at the wheel in behind a Rivian R1T and you're asleep behind the wheel. Um, fortunately, there's safety equipment that's built in these vehicles now to make it a little bit so you shouldn't be hitting the object in front of you. But what happens in the wintertime, that safety equipment, those cameras and sensors, they don't work. They get covered up with snow and ice. So here you are in a 7,000 pound tank that goes 0 to 60 in three, four, five seconds, falling asleep at the wheel, and you go right to the guardrail because the guardrail is not going to prevent you from going to the side. Or you swing up your buddies, you and hit some black ice, and you spin out. And you spin out and turn, you go right to the concrete barrier and into another piece of traffic. So that's a really interesting scenario that could play out. We could see some, well, some high profile accidents as we get more EVs on the road and we have more drivers of EVs uh, doing the fallacy of saying it's got autopilot, it's, it'll drive itself. This doesn't exist these days, but I can see this happening more and more. And I just thought it was a really interesting video. And I thought I would share with you guys today because it really got my attention. And just seeing that Rivian go, I mean, just incredible footage. And I don't know what the answer is. You know, right? you want EVs need to be lighter, better range, while well, you have better battery, battery technology. It just, we're not there yet. It's just a lot of stuff going on. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Are you guys thinking this is something you've heard of before? It's the first time I've ever heard it. First time you've ever heard it. I'd be curious. I just, like I said, I thought it was really fascinating stuff. And we should be talking more about this, about everything not just charging EVs, not just the price of them, the range, how far they drive, but the entire uh, ecosystem around them. How does that change our entire world? And it's interesting stuff. For more interesting stuff, check the videos over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.